Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and return with having. When I'm doing these audio casts, I'm thinking, of course, of my love and what life could be like in love. When I lost my life partner of 20-some years and son, I really began to look at what is life about for me? What is my everything? When I communicated that message to an older assembly, he mocked the whole thing. But my guess is it's because he doesn't put a lot invested in his home or in his belongings. He has no antique collection. He is more of a computer geek, and that means he has limited social skills. I'm pretty sure he thinks he's pretty technically savvy. I'm pretty sure he thinks he's pretty socially adept. But I'm not sure that the people in his business community really feel that way. I think they're constantly feeling they're being manipulated or bullshitted or made fun of or possibly just played one-upsmanship with. You see, the man is not really in my life, and barely did he ever show up on time for any Christmas, holiday, Thanksgiving, or any company or family meal. Not only that, when my late father passed and they were putting him into the ground, they couldn't wait another 15 minutes for me to arrive when I got stuck in traffic. So I didn't even get a chance to enjoy or participate in the celebration of the loss of my father's life. But if I tell these stories, what do you think of me is not important. What you think of them might be important, but what you think of your own life, your own future, your own lineage, your own heritage, and your own bequeathments are up to you. When I chose the person I want to bequeath my life to, I made a very difficult choice. It was hard to give up wanting to bequeath my life goods to someone I had been a partner with for more than 20 years, and the child and offspring that I cared for all that time. But I realized that it would be almost impossible to do that. So I chose what I felt was the next best thing or the best thing that ever walked into my life, and that's who I chose to leave my life goods to. It's also who I chose to have be the person who takes over if something should happen to me, meaning if I meet my demise earlier than I'd like. But I have the right, as does any human being of any age of majority, to develop in their self a, well, federally protected life insurance policy. And openly, I have the right to have that policy pay for itself while I'm working through indigency caused by other people's lies, other people's theft, and other people's, well, fraud on my life. You see, when someone tries to pay a bill for someone without their lawful consent, it is still considered fraud and a version of identity theft. When a person refuses to pay a bill that they promised to pay, it is also another form of fraud and identity theft. It is definitely a breach of a verbal agreement, which is prosecutable underneath most laws in states and federally across the land. When we talk about the truth of life, we talk about people who want to destroy the lives of their children. And those people don't really understand their life as well as they should because most likely it wasn't their life's work that established their, well, independent status in their elderly years of senior life in an independent living center. You know, it's possible that people become old and frail. It's possible that they become feeble in their mind. But what usually happens over time is that they lose the ability to drive as they lose their eyesight, and they sort of lose a little bit of their hearing, which is why hearing aids are so important to everyone today, because the ability to hear really impacts the quality of life. But at the same time, since they lose that opportunity to drive, they don't have as many easy opportunities to go and practice their faith. They become out of touch with God. They become out of touch with the music that they have lived and sang their whole life, and they become out of touch with a lot of things that are important in life. They start to make preferences. They start to make differences. They start to make and play favorites with their children of who they get to come at their beck and call and who they decide is too much of a black sheep for them to tolerate at all. The life of a person becomes very clear in their elder years of what their life is really like, how they will live, what they will say, and what will they do when they stand before Jesus Christ is a really good question I often ask people today. What's your life going to look like before Christ today? How are you going to explain yourself before Jesus? I don't give a shit whether you believe in God. I don't care whether or not you believe in Jesus at all. I don't care if you even believe in heaven's pearly gates, but here's what I can tell you pretty straightforward. There is a Holy Ghost. There is a heavenly body, and you will face that gate. You will face Archangel Gabriel. You will face the angels of the Lord who will say, not why should you be here, because everybody knows that Christ's death allows them to be, but where should we put you in your retraining for your, well, your life history? You see, whether or not you walk through heaven's gates to see your extended relatives and loved ones that passed on before you, such as your spouse or children or, or whatnot who left you earlier, or whether you literally get retrained through a version of hell to teach you about life is something interesting. There's a marvelous film with Albert, Albert Brooks and Meryl Streep that kind of goes through the concept of what heaven's gates might be like 
and how people make stupid decisions out of selfishness and their own ideologies on life that have nothing to do with God's house. In Jesus' name we pray all the time and we've asked him to bless our food all the time for those of us who live and grew up in a family of faith. But it's interesting how families of faith destroy themselves. It's interesting how families of faith play out the stupidity of the Bible. The scenes that we've heard a million times in school and in Sunday school and in sermons and yet it turns them into a total fool at the end of their life. When we talk about God, how do you talk about God? Do you talk about God as a Heavenly Father who can raise you up and lift you up higher and higher? Or do you talk about God in fire and brimstone that He is out there to punish and you're out there to help Him punish people's lives? The truth is you're the fool of the world. Your job is to focus 100% on your life, your spouse, and only your children. Once those children reach the age of majority, they are fully responsible for the decisions they make. If they walk onto a property unlawfully without the consent of the shareholder or the renter or the person who owns that property, they are trespassing. And if you decide to play around with someone's banking account, if you decide to get into someone's personal belongings, you are totally beholden to financial accountability for what you've done and the federal laws that said you just invaded somebody's privacy. You just destroyed your rights in the world because you had no fucking right to do it, no matter how much your bloodline might relate to it. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth of the world, and the fools of America are those family members, those children who are not in God's house at all, who have married poorly, who have chosen the wrong spouse, and are being led incredibly astray within the laws of American culture.